Okay, that's it recording now. Uh, hey guys, um, we're Brandon and myself. We're just going to talk again about uh, the weekend's uh, games that have just passed. Uh, this is our third podcast for doing this, which is it's just a reflection piece more than anything else to uh, reflect on how the um, games went the second weekend of the Six Nations. So I think we'll just go through them one at a time. Uh, just start off with the Scotland game, I think. Um, mm-hmm. if that's all right with yourself, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, that's start at the start. Hi. Uh, so, yeah, um, I did a video on this already, my reaction to what happened. Um, three very soft tries, I think, uh, we gave to Ireland. Uh, scored a pretty good one ourselves. Um, and too many basic errors that cost us, as well as a, a referee that, yeah, just didn't have a good mm-hmm. game at all and seemed to favour Ireland in a lot of the bigger decisions let's see um anyway what do you think of the match brandon well yeah um going into the match i generally thought you had a good chance and to be honest throughout the game ireland weren't actually that good i didn't feel like they played uh, that well at all um the first try well it's you know it's a schoolboy error from seymour as you said in your reaction video you know even if you take it into contact and you can see penalty for not releasing the ball. Um, at least then you're not giving them an easy try. And Maitland and Seymour just don't communicate well enough. Um, the pass from Seymour is too much. And obviously, yeah. Conor Murray gets it. Um, Scotland, you know, uh, lots of great build-up play. But then basic things like ball handling, uh, forward passes, uh, discipline at the breakdown. And as you said, the ref had a pretty bad game. Lots of decisions were 50-50 decisions or should have been on Scotland's side, but went to the Irish a lot of the time. But, you know, you can't blame it all on the ref. No, no. But you, I mean, it was a missed opportunity for Scotland yesterday. Yeah. I think uh, the most annoying thing was definitely the uh, Peter O'Mahony clearly uh, put his shoulder out and took out Stuart Hogg as he did early on, yeah. which in the end led to Ireland's first try. And I, mean, no, I was really annoyed that that wasn't picked up at all, or the TMO didn't go, or the TMO didn't yeah. step in either, and it, it eventually resulted in Hogg going off injured. Uh, and um, yeah, and obviously Peter O'Mahony got off with it, and he was. Uh, yeah, you end up being man of the match, which I am dubious about. Uh, maybe it's just a, a per, per, personal dis- dislike for him after he did that, and one or two other things he did in the game as well. But um, yeah, I mean, just that—that that was the biggest thing that the biggest gripe I had. Um, apparently, though, with the first try, uh, just go back to that. Um, apparently, um, Maitland uh, called. Uh, called it from Seymour uh, to give the ball to him, and obviously, but uh, it looked very hasty the way Seymour just got the ball and just hastily passed it back, and it was badly executed pass, which obviously Maitland couldn't catch, and then Conor Murray scored. So, yeah, I think it was like they're both to blame for that one, but um, yeah, so I'm, I was just a yeah, sp- it, yeah, disappointing. It, it is just basic communication between two which is needed. Um, yeah. It, it's a good kick behind, but Seymour's got time to decide what to do. But and the thing for that, Scotland had actually been on top. They started mm-hmm. really well and dominated and looked like the stronger team. Hogg was having some nice runs. I was surprised. Ireland kicked a lot to Hogg in the first 10 yeah. minutes or so. Um, but then, you know, that happens and momentum switches, everything changes. And yeah, all of a sudden, you're facing an Irish team who are decent at closing a game out when they've got the lead. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did show glimpses of what you can do for sure. But the Stuart Hogg with Omani, it's a clear obstruction. Um, it's clearly that you know it should at least be a penalty, if not a yellow. I would no, have it should given have been a it yellow, yellow at least. Yeah, because um, it was just cynical. And, yeah, yeah, and but for whatever reason, the ref has decided not to look at it. Um, yeah, it's it's an inch. You know. All of the season, we've been talking about, um, you know, refs making decisions on high tackles, on head uh, injuries, on contact to the head and stuff like that. And this, once again, just it's just one of those stupid things that the ref just hasn't picked mm. up. And Stuart Hogg was having a really good game to start with and looking very dangerous. King Horn came on, had an impact, did OK, um, uh, but he's not Stuart Hogg. Well, he's not Stuart Hogg, no, you know. But, um... Well, he didn't start too well. I think he forgot what position he actually was playing because uh, it led up to Stockdale's try. It's like 
Because it's like, what the hell are you doing out on the left? It's like you were there last week. You, you're replacing the fullback, so get back to yeah. get get back to playing fullback, mate. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, th- I just think yeah. he just thought he was on the left wing. And he just went, so he just decided to go over there. So I don't know what he was thinking uh, with that one. Then obviously it went through Stockdale, just went through and scored the try. So, um, but yeah, that was the biggest disappointment for me. Definitely is just how easy Ireland's tries were. I thought we didn't make them work too hard for it, and they weren't at their best either so that was the most frustrating thing um but they also had their gripes with uh us and with uh poat as well because they there was a f- few irish folk who thought that we were um taking out johnny sexton late as to and that's how he went off injured even though we actually weren't taking him out extremely late because we were committed to the tackles when he had the ball and it was just kind of subtly you know then uh when he passed the ball we were still committed so it wasn't actually a late tackle so um yeah, but and that's one of those things with rugby. It happens. You, you you know you target opposition players. It's uh, you know right right or it's not necessarily right, but it's you know it happens. So it's not gonna you're not gonna get rid of that. But as long as you're doing it within the law somewhat, I, I mean I didn't see the big issue. But obviously Sadi went off injured, but um, I didn't think we were doing anything particularly illegal there. Mm. I, I, I thought that the tactical decision same for Sexton England did it, it worked really well. Um, Sexton, if he can control a game, he has a massive impact on it. If he can do what he wants with the ball, then he controls the match. But Scotland were obviously targeting him. It worked a lot, except for the try for Stock there where he released the pass just perfectly on time. The defence wasn't brilliant on that, mm-hmm. but I didn't think there was anything particularly wrong with it. I thought it was a good... Um, good tactic to have and when Wales play Ireland I would hope that the likes of Moriarty um, Navidi will be targeting him I hope they will um, because yeah I think it'll work well and the, the thing is the, yeah the problem is though that the way he went off injured which I thought was a bit mm-hmm. like yeah I, do, I mean I'm not saying you know, any player to go off injured but uh, I did think we were within the laws with how we did it even though some Irish folk wouldn't be happy with me saying that but hey ho the uh, Check, check the law book. As long as you're committed to the tackle while the player has the ball, then it still counts. It's only late if you're committed after he's passed the ball. So, uh, yeah, there's no problem with that. Um, yeah, I think going forward, um, Ireland obviously have Italy next, so I expect them to win that reasonably comfortably. Uh, I think um, they're still in se- in second gear they're still not you know they, they weren't that great uh yesterday to be honest with you on yesterday this has been recorded on sunday uh to be honest with you but um they yeah they um were solid enough to get the win but i think they'll step up in a level against italy and expect them to beat them pretty comfortably um i think they also um showed uh what a talented player that joey carberry is even um mm. so that he looked a good good uh, uh substitute for sexton um but uh, yeah, I think for their, tr- their try, the third try again was a mistake by us because it was a simple tackle by Dell and Har- Harley, and they should have nailed him, and he just got through. But yeah, and then so I think Ireland uh, should should be okay against Italy, and um, they'll step up a bit. And I think going into the final game against uh, Wales, they'll be ne- I, I, I think they'll be pretty much near their best going into that game. So that'll be an interesting oh, game. Oh, great. Right, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just, just saying. Uh, but um, and for our our sakes, we just need to focus on France and getting a team that can go to Paris and win. Because if we don't get at least three wins, I think this championship, then it's going to be a step backwards uh, for us. Because we've won three in the last two championships. We've won three games. We need to make sure we're at least at the same level or going forward. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. We need to make sure we win in two weeks' time, and uh, well, and at least two two of the last three games. I'm not expecting us to win at Twickenham, but I think we can definitely win the next two. So look forward to that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought Ireland weren't at their best. Um, Carberry came on. He's actually been playing really well for months. Yeah, in the been, Pro yeah. 14. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's a very more. He's like. For Wales, it's like Anscombe and bigger. He's more of an Anscombe mm. style player. Wants to run with the ball in hand a lot more. Um, and yeah, that ta- those two guys who went for the tackle on him, you just got to nail him. You've got to take him out. Um, he didn't start too well though, throwing the pass for Finn Russell to intercept. Yeah, true, true. And the awareness, 
the awareness for Russell yeah. when he was on the ground popping up. It was like I think the commentator said it was like he was lying on a sofa and just popping it <laughs> up to uh, John. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I I thought um, that you guys were unlucky, um, but against France, uh, we'll talk get to France in a mm-hmm. bit. But if I was you, I'd be going fairly confident. But you never know about France and Paris because yeah. they can turn well. In Paris. Well, the thing is, because first time Murray Field, I'd back you a hundred percent. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We haven't won in Paris for twenty years, so that's saying something. So we're due one. We're due one. But uh, I'm not expecting it to be an easy game at all, at all. And I do expect France to be better than what they were against England. Um, but we'll move on to that in a bit. I think. Um, that covers that mostly. Uh, we can go on to Italy Wales now. Um, yeah. Ten changes, I think, proved a bit too much of a. Ter- ter- um, I don't know what's the word. A bit too too many changes to make. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, you know I said on the preview uh, for this weekend's matches too many changes for me. Uh, <laughs> ten is a lot. Maybe a sign of arrogance. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say that if you're thinking about the World Cup, it's too late now. You know, those players that uh, Gatlin was thinking of giving a run out should have played against Argentina in the summer or should have played against Tonga or South Africa. Well, or, a lot of them did. Um, so. or the others in the autumns, um, lots of them did. But a lot that came in on uh, against Italy, you know, that's an opportunity for them to put their hands up and say, I should be going to the World Cup or you should pick me mm-hmm. against England or later in the tournament. I don't think any one of them did that. I don't think anyone particularly stood out except for maybe Josh Adams again, who I thought had a decent yeah, game. Yeah, I think he's I think he's looking um, somewhat nailed on for that left wing uh, role because I think he's, he's looking a, a very good player. I, thought, I was impressed with him. I also thought that um, Owen Watkin did pretty well coming in at 12. Yeah. Was ha- and, uh, yeah. And I thought uh, the, your back row were mostly pretty good as well. I think um, Aaron Wainwright is, again, staking a claim for the sixth shirt at the minute. So I think I, th- I was actually impressed with his performance. Um, but, uh, yeah, on the whole, like, you know, I was surprised just how much he kicked the ball. Like, even with Bigger at 10, he just kicked the ball away so much. And it was like, you know, it was just, re- it seemed like a really bad balance you had at halfback. Because Al- Alan Davis is, he's like a, yeah. uh, he's like a quick and... Nifty nine, and then you've got bigger who just stands so far back, and he's just kicking it a lot, and it's like a real, like really bad balance there in mm. terms of how you try to play. Because I mean, I know like bigger, he's not, he's not quite like Anscombe where he like steps up to the steps up to the line, but he is capable of at least on un, um on releasing the backs when the, when he's got a platform. But you just kick the ball away so much, which is. Um, I thought not a great tactic, especially against Italy, where you know we thought mm-hmm. if we keep the ball long enough, then they're either a going to give away penalties or b you're going to wear them down and find a gap somewhere mm-hmm. and get through them. So yeah, that was it's just yeah. really strange cat tactics. How much kicking mm-hmm. Wales did, I think. Mm. Yeah, and I thought um, one of the strange things was that we seemed pretty. Um, we seemed too comfortable, I think. We were 12-0 up at one point, mm-hmm. and I thought, right, we need to try now. We need to try to mm-hmm. get a try, maybe get a penalty, another penalty before half-time and close the game off. Second off, we can come out and blow them away. It just seemed like we weren't that bothered about trying to get a try. You know, we'd go three or four phases and lose the ball, or we'd try a stupid pass, or big, as you said, would kick. If we'd have stuck and gone through the phases... As you guys showed against Italy last week, you get tries. Italy are not that good a side. And to be honest, um, I think, uh, you know, you could say that Italy played well, but I don't particularly think that they played that well. Mm-hmm. Um, and Wales, we weren't anything special either. Um, so, you know, for Italy to get those tries that they did, I think it's quite embarrassing for us. Um, but my well, biggest I think is... Sure, I think Sean Edwards will be fuming at the second one. Oh, I mean the yeah. first, the first, the first one. I do. I actually will give credit to Italy for that because they did build up through the phases and eventually uh, Stain got over the line. But yeah, that that um, second that uh, second one. I think you know um, Anscombe was be, been in for a bit of a rollicking for how he just like shot out yeah. the line as he did. Um, so yeah, he's done that. He's done that quite a lot recently. Yeah. He did it against oh, South Africa, I think it was. Just shot out the line for one of their um, points. I can't remember for what it was, but he has a tendency to do that. Gets overexcited mm-hmm. and steps out. And against England, I don't think we. You just can't afford that because 
<laughs> man who will love that, right. you know. Yeah, that's um, the thing. If you're step, if you're stepping out like that, you have to be, you know, assured that the ball is going to come to your man and that you're gonna like yeah. absolutely flatten him, or you're, yeah. you know, sealing off the options of going wide. Mm. And he did neither. He just yeah. shot right up and yeah. left a big open space and yeah. a dog leg defence for the for Allen to run into and put the winger away. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh... yeah, his eyes must have opened very wide. You'd be like, "Where's all this space come from?" You know. Um, but yeah, I, I think those ten changes. How do we carry that momentum? Of to be honest, we haven't. Re- we've only played maybe thirty minutes of decent rugby in this whole tournament so mm-hmm. far. And you look at the quality of where England is at at the minute. Yeah. If this game was at Twickenham, we wouldn't stand a chance. If no. it was at Twickenham, we don't stand a chance. No, I agree with that. Um, and I'd say England are on for the Grand Slam because it's in Cardiff. There's a little bit more of a chance, but I am nervous. And there is no momentum going from just a, well. We didn't just about beat Italy. I don't think the result was ever in question mm-hmm. against Italy. But how do you go from a a five point five out of ten maybe performance against Italy to playing against the informed team in the competition now, who just blew away France and smashed Ireland out in Dublin? There is no momentum. Um, but yeah, fair play to Italy. They did some things well. But again, w- one of the big things that surprised me was our lineouts. We only won four out of seven yes. of our lineouts, and that's the second week on the bounce. And it's not the same hooker. And I think it's because Alan Wynn wasn't playing. I think. Well, that's the you know, that's the thing. He was playing. Play- play- <laughs> um, Alan Wynn was playing against uh, France, though, and you had the same stats there at the lineout. So yeah. I think I don't know. It's a it's a te- yeah. I don't know if it's a team thing or you know sort of just. Not um yeah. not communicating correctly or lack of that it is probably a combination of uh, of everything really that's been the problem like lack of accuracy and throwing like lack of communication etc so you know something you definitely need to improve on if you're wanting to beat England yeah. um I do uh, fully expect you will will be a lot better uh, against mm. England um because I mean you can't play that badly again again and uh, you know yeah. I think in Cardiff as well that will definitely help you. Yeah. But yeah, you can't. You yeah. have to like make sure that you're getting, yeah, you know, getting the set pieces right, and you're that you're not giving away anything cheap, and that you're, like I say, you're actually getting accurate, getting the accuracy right. Which um, mm. and the team as well, expected to be more along the lines of the team that played against France. Um, mm. But uh, yeah. again, again, that I think confidence is a big thing. Like from the first two mm-hmm. games, they'll be confident with. Winning because winning becomes a habit, even if you're not playing necessarily well. And mm-hmm. you guys are definitely in the winning habit just now, so that is also an advantage. But in terms of actual like performance confidence, how 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 are you going to be like, especially with the standard you're no doubt going to be up against uh, against England? Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think you know, like um, there's some big decisions to make with the starting team. Um, some changes I might look at making. Um, obviously, just taking from the France team now, who will play against France. Of course, the guys who play against Italy, hardly of them will play against England. But we have got to be so much better. And as you said, I do think we will be. Um, but yeah, who starts at 10 is going to be interesting mm-hmm. uh, for that one. I'm very unsure about who I personally would pick. I'm leaning towards Anscombe, just about. Mm-hmm. Um but you know it's going to be one of them games where it's going to it's going to be extremely physical. Two very physical sides going at each other. Um, but yeah, you, you know that performance against Italy. We, you know, I was looking on loads of Facebook forums and stuff, like that, and everyone's like, "Oh, we were crap. We were awful. We were, we were just rubbish." I was like, "Yeah, we didn't play great, but we still won. It's eleven games on the bounce that we've won now. We won two out of our two games of the Six Nations. The Grand Slam is still on. All the Championship is still on." We have England at home. If we were facing England away, it would be a very different story. Then we face Scotland away, which is a winnable game. And then we host Ireland. And Ireland on high on confidence at the minute. And we've blooded some young players. And as you said, I think Aaron Wainwright, he has been fantastic for us for the last six, eight months or so. And, you know, if I had a choice between him and Lydiot for that number six jersey, I'd happily give it to Wainwright oh, at really? the minute. Really? Um, yeah, oh, okay. I, I think he's been brilliant. I think he has been so good for us. And for such a young guy, he is captain material, you know, in a few years' time. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he left the Dragons for the Scarlets or the Ospreys in the next few years either because, yeah, 
nothing good happens in the dragons usually. To be honest, <laughs> right. just so. just 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 follow 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 to to bath, mate. That'll sort them. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. But yeah, I think um, I like I agree with that. I swear, I I would um, of the, of the players that came in, I actually I would stick with uh, Wayne Wright at six. Um, instead of Navidi, I'd put Navidi on the bench, and uh, you know, obviously put Tipperick and Moriarty in the back row as well. And I'd, I'd pick, stick with Owen Watkin at twelve over Hadley Park because um, Hadley Park hasn't impressed me in the past uh, few games I've seen him. So you know, I think um, and Watkin looked decent uh, when he got chances and he scored a try against against Italy. So I think you know, give. I'd, I don't see why. Well, I don't want to say I don't see the harm in it because then you know he plays against England and makes a big mistake and England win because of it. But I'd see, I'd say, yeah, give him a, give a, give him a, give him another shot. I think he's uh, shown he deserves it. So that's what I would go. That was the only like changes from I would go for the rest. I think would be pretty much um, the same as it was against uh, France. Like I said, so and maybe Gareth. I think Gareth Davis will start at nine as well. Mm-hmm. we'll yeah. See. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, with regards to Italy, though, I think um, I think they can be like take some positives in that they show they can uh, you know stick stick with a a bit a, a good team for eighty minutes, even if the good team didn't have a great game. Like Italy showed that they could stick with them for eighty minutes and give them and cause them some problems. So I think they'll mm-hmm. they'll definitely take comfort in that. But uh, Again, I'm expecting a, a long championship for them. They might have a chance in the last game against France, but uh, it's going to be really, really tough in a couple of weeks. I think I, I think Ireland, even though they didn't play brilliantly against us, are still a wounded animal, and I think they're going to, you know, be building, take Italy as a, a stepping stone to build more confidence and get a higher level. And um, I think it will be fairly comfortable for Ireland in a couple of weeks. I'll be honest. So, but if it, if it, yeah. yeah. No, just good. Well, one thing about Italy, I think we have to talk about though is, like, in the last two years, how much have they really improved? Um, mm-hmm. Well, it's been I for, don't think they've improved that much. Well, it's been for a long I, time. I generally yeah. don't. And I think um, that um, one player who's come through which looks decent is Minotzi, the fullback who has been out injured this tournament. Last tournament, he had an incredible tournament. He's been great for, I think it's Treviso. Mm -hmm. He's been great for this season. Um, But let's be realistic. It was a Wales team with 10 changes. We didn't play well, and we still won quite comfortably. Um, So for Italy, as you said, I think it's been a long tournament. They face France away, I think. No, they're France at Um, at home. They've got France. Oh, is it France at home? Oh, it's a completely different prospect then. So, yeah. It'd be lovely for Parise to get a win at the end of the tournament, but yeah, against Ireland, it's going to be tough for them for sure. Yeah, um, but like I say, I think I, I do actually think um, Conor O'Shea has improved them in the past couple of years, but it's what he's what he's working with and the resources he has to to available to him, and you know how much money Italy have compared to all the other nations. Um, you know, he's he's basically almost working with one hand tied behind his back and he's got a pretty limited group of players on the whole. So I think he's for what he has, he's not doing that badly. It's just the level they're at is they've still got an awfully long way to go if they're wanting to be like seriously competitive at the top level. So yeah, but I mean, like I said, I think I think they might they might have a chance against uh, France in the last game if France play as poorly as they did today. Um but um, who knows? We'll see see what happens there. But that's that's yeah. for another time. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to England, France now. Obviously, England looking uh, pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, one may say uh, they were absolutely ruthless. Yeah. They were their kicking, their defense was immense. Mm-hmm. Their kicking game was excellent. Johnny May, mm-hmm. uh, possibly no, not possibly, is the wing of the championship right now. Uh, he's mm-hmm. playing so well. Scoring great tries. Uh, France, on the other hand, extremely uh, poor, rudderless as a team of individuals, but collectively they're just not there at all. Um, I mean, a few decent individual efforts, but on the whole, as a team, they're just, you know, look so directionless and so, you know, void of le- leadership and just so just doesn't look like they know where, where they're going or what they want to do. And England just absolutely exposed them. I mean... You know, but that's the thing. I didn't think France were that much 
I think, well, they were um, worse than they were against Wales, but I didn't think they were all that much worse. I think England, like, more actually saw saw their flaws and exploited them. Mm. And um, yeah. I think that's... And their kicking game was uh, excellent for that as well, as, as, as I mentioned. So, uh, yeah, I think England just really good overall. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, a, a combination of both. First of all, France were poor. England were brilliant. The kicking game was fantastic. I think... Uh, a start for you, England, 44 times they kicked the ball out of hand in the match. Mm-hmm. Um, 33 of those, no, 35 of those times, sorry, you stayed in field, so they were tactical kicks. Um, and oh, what's the French fullback called? Huge, is it? Huge, yeah. Um, he, he, he thought he was playing wing at some point and wasn't staying back, um, you know, defending. He would come up to the defensive line and there'd be a massive gap behind him and foul at the field, they just kicking over the top, Daly had a field day kicking over the mm-hmm. top, you know um, yeah, France they just seem to not really know what they're doing, they just get the ball like, they, they showed some instances where they would break the first line of defence they'd give a lovely offload, they'd be in and then they'd be like, I don't know what to do now it'd be like, they'd suddenly freeze and not know what to do and they would drop it or knock it on um, yeah. but yeah, they're just a group of individuals it's really sad to see because I remember France where you know, they were challenging for the Six Nations every year, mm. but now they're just being French, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know if being French, they're just not look they're just not look like they're just drop level, they're not mm. looking good at all, um, right now. But yeah, I think I did think that winger uh, Pinot uh looks a deep looks a very good player. But the thing is, yeah. um because he was like pushing up so high, they were there was uh, that was part of the reason they were spacing behind as well. But the thing is, um, wingers mostly these days they are uh, the defensive wingers they mostly are very high up in the line to you know push up out of defence. Um, so yeah, I agree with you that Uji has to take some responsibility for not covering his winger or 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 the uh, sweeping scrum half para as well. I think should take a role for not for not covering his winger if you know because if the winger's pushing up too too high and then there's space in behind to kick it, there should be like at least cover from a full back or a sweeping scrum half. And there was neither. Pino was mostly just left to do it, try and do it himself. And uh, poor bugger uh, may creamed him basically yeah. so uh but yeah. i think I, I thought para also had a really poor game morgan para mm-hmm. um and i thought when dupont came on i thought he did something good you know he actually ran at the defense he tried to speed up the ball a bit and once france did that that's when they started uh, to break through the defense a little bit I, and get those offloads i again though again me, again though it's yeah. like i mean i agree with you about dupont but it's individual stuff again because he was like just individually trying to do it I mean, I would say he was trying to do it himself, but his teammates weren't in tune with what he was doing or like how he was trying to play most of the time. You know, they were just, you know, at times he would make a break and they'd either stand back or like he'd make a break and uh, like, uh, you know, like Entomac, he'd run either the wrong support line or, you know, or I mean, to be fair, I think that was kind of more Dupé putting a, a bad kick in, but you can also, but the, the support line Entomac uh, ran for him wasn't the support line that he actually needed to, you know, create a try, but... Um, yeah. So, but yeah, again, just individuals. They're just playing as individuals. They're not playing together as a team, and that's where I'd have some confidence. I'd have some confidence for a couple of weeks' time. Uh, but yeah, um, and England, on the other hand, yeah. they just stepped up again. They're, they're. De- I think John Mitchell coming in as their defence coach has really made a massive uh, difference to them. And defensively, they're looking a lot more assured, a lot more assured than they were last year. They're looking. They're not giving much away at all. Um, and they're, you know, just looking like a real force. And I think they'd be favourites for the Grand Slam. I'm still not sure mm-hmm. if they will get it. I mean, we'll see in a... If they beat Wales in a couple of weeks, if they beat Wales in a couple of weeks, I'll say, yeah, they'll get the Grand Slam probably. Yeah, no. but, but if... Yeah, I hate to say it, but yeah, uh, if they do beat us, they will win it. Um, yeah, back to France, though, one little thing. Uh, you know, the thing about France that seems to happen, and... I listened to an interview with uh, Philippe Saint-André, the uh, ex-coach of the national team, and he said the big issue for France at the minute is their domestic league. But um, he recently uh, went to see um, the uh, Champions Cup final, which happened a few years ago between Toulon and Clermont. Um, I think that was about four years ago now. And he was coach of France at the time. And France were playing really poorly. And someone asked him, why are you playing so poorly with two of your sides? in Europe's final of the best teams. And he said, I can only pick eight of these players 
to play for the national side because everyone else is from South Africa, from Australia. There's English people here. There's Irish people over here. And that seems to be the issue, that they've got all these foreign players in and the young players, such as and finally players like Dupont is now playing, but it seems like that's stunted their growth. And I don't think that the style of top 14 suits international hey. rugby. I think that... Hey. You have to be extremely fit for international rugby. You know, you can't just be big and powerful. Mm. You have to have that level of fitness, which I don't think France have. And yeah, yeah I just think it's really sad to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, I, I don't know about like I, I, I wouldn't say it's the top fourteen per se because I think even with the foreigners there, they do produce a lot of players. France, so they have plenty. Um, they have plenty to pick from. I, I'd say it's like more like the the grassroots the the priorities um, after the past few years. Uh, I mean, Brian Moore even said that, you know, he, he's um, spoken to um, French um, mini rugby academies or um, French academies or mini rugby um, places in France. And they said that even at that level, they're prioritising size and power above anything else. No. And um, mm. But the thing is with the top 14, in, in the past though, like, you know, uh, French leagues have always been, have mostly been about... Um, you know physicality and uh, a lot of kicking um but it's not always affected the national team like in the past like the national team would always you know play with like flair and say and sort of could switch it switch it on when they want to and they could also switch it off when they want to as well but you know they still produced um, like enough talent i think there is still talent in that french side they just seem to be like all over the place in terms of yeah. not and they're not a team and I think no, I, I do think the schedule, um, more so than the foreigners there, that is is a bigger problem. Like, I think they're ex a lot of them are expected to play like something like over forty games a season or something like that, which is absolutely ludicrous. So I think that needs looked at um, over there. I think their priorities in terms of how they want their players to be, they need to, you know, stop putting size and power above anything else. It needs to be like you know, because rugby is a skill game, you know, and it's a technique game. It is, you know, you, I mean, power in some areas, like if you're carrying, etc., or making big tack or making huge tackles, it does it does help. But you know, it's still the skills, the techniques. They're they're the priorities. What you need, like not being like big fat lump, because there's no point being a big fat lump if you can't like maintain the ball after you've um after you've been tackled, or you know, you can't. Uh, or if you, or if you like, make a tackle that isn't a tackle really. If you can't tackle properly, so yeah, yeah, this is a process that we've been going through for Wales. You know, we used to have this Warren ball where we'd have Jamie Roberts coming down the ten channel and trying to take get over the gain line by their fly half, and then we'd go through the phases and just power way over. Aye, that's the last a, two sorry, years. Sorry, so, sorry to drop man. That's a bit fine. different. That's a bit different though, is because. Uh, you, Wales actually do have players with technique. They have players who know how to, you know, even if they were just charging forward and going direct a lot of the time, they still had like the basic skills of like, you know, getting the tackle, yeah. going into the tackles low, getting the ball back, mm -hmm. uh, and making sure that you know you're steady, getting play enough players to the ruck to be efficient with the ball. Whereas this Fre French side, they just for a few for a few years now, they've just been all like big beasts lumps and tech and apart from in the scrum technique wise they've been a mixed bag at best so i mean there's been t there were times like today even they were just like individuals just running and charging up and they were going either too high into the tackles and were knocking it on or they're just like not getting the right support lines and it was just you know yeah. all over the place uh so yeah. yeah but we have to credit england england were brilliant today um and yeah, Farrell dictated the whole game. Mm -hmm. I thought Billy Vanapola was a little bit quieter than yeah. usual, but he did some other things that were necessary. I thought Wilson had a good game as well, physical. Um, yeah, I just thought it was very comfortable for England, mm -hmm. and I think we will provide a stern test for oh, them. Oh, you, you will, you will. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope we will. I really. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm No, I'm, I know. I, I am confident that Wales will give England a. A, a proper test mm. match. Uh, whether that'll be enough mm. to overturn them, I'm not sure. But I do. Mm. I'm confident it will be. It will be a proper test match in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. I uh, just hope I'm in a yeah. a happyish mood uh, going into it after the Scotland France game. But um, yeah, no, it'll be a. It will be a very fascinating game, regardless. So yeah, uh, and and there were um, 
the war of the words has started. Eddie Jones has called us the best ever Welsh side. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. We'll, we'll see what happens in the next two weeks. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the next two weeks for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't so, pay. I don't yeah, pay much attention. Yeah, I don't pay much attention to what yeah. Eddie Jones says anymore. He's just uh, he does. He does what he does. He just like uses the press um, to put the attention yeah. onto himself and to you know get people talking. But you know, it's just yeah. it's just him playing his mind games. Really, I'm not really bothered by it personally. So you know. Just uh, yeah, but yeah. like I said, it's just about the game for me. Per- and that's just talking from my own, own perspective. Um, but mm. yeah, um, what did you think of? Uh, we'll talk about a couple of the uh, talking points. One, the Chris Ashton penalty try. Um, what did you think mm. about that? Penalty try. Um, def- uh, well, I wouldn't say definite because I wasn't hundred percent sure if Ashton would have actually been able to control it. Because uh, he seemed to be bouncing a bit towards his left, and he wasn't running mm. in that direction as such. But I think you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the attacking team, which Nigel Owens had seemed to be doing throughout the match. Mm-hmm. So I think it was a penalty try, and if it's a penalty try, he's got to go to the bin. Mm. He's taken one for the team of uh, Fuku there. Um, well, he's not really you know, he's not really but, taken one for the team if he's yeah. getting yellow cut if he's giving the penalty try oh, no, away. But, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, but. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, penalty try for me. Um, I'm not, what about you? What do you think? I'm not sure. I know I didn't think it was a... I thought it was a yellow card and a penalty because he tackled him off the ball, but Entomac was quite close to Ashton and it was like, and the ball was going away from Ashton a bit um, on the ground yeah. when Fiku tackled him. So I would have said, like, you know, that... Again, I, I don't think... I think it was just a penalty and a yellow card because I don't think it was absolute guarantee Ashton was going to get to the ball and I don't think it was... Guarantee, like I think there was also a, a chance of Entomac getting back and catching him. So, you know, I I thought it was just a pen, just a. It was penalty. close. It was very very close. Very close. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, another ref could have said, um, could have said, yeah, no penalty try, just a penalty. But for me, I would have backed Ashton to collect it and to score. But it was a close one for sure. But I don't think it affected the result at all. No. Um, uh, I think England would have won that quite comfortably, and then the Farrell try, um, really close. I was ju- uh, I was I dubious think... about that because um, Johnny yeah, May Johnny sure. May held back uh, Dupont's uh, arm as he was going yeah. for the ball, and mm. that wasn't spot. I don't know why the TMO didn't pull pull Nigel yeah, up yeah. about that because I thought that was uh, mm. that was illegal. So yeah, I'm not. I don't yeah. really. I'm not sure that try should have been given. Mm. Uh, I I don't think because I did think because it is illegal to pull someone's arms. I mean, you see players subtly do it all the time around breakdowns where they're just like, you know, either at the side of a rock and they're out of the game but they're still tugging on someone's leg or um, they're or they're just like, you know, if, if a kick goes up, they're just subtly blocking them just but trying to make it look yeah. like, oh, I'm not in the way, but they're, they are, yeah, it is yeah. illegal, but still it's illegal, you know, you're taking a guy off the ball regardless, it's illegal, but yeah, that, yeah. So, and I think, um, I think Kyle Sinclair was a lucky man oh, to yeah, be on I gonna, the pitch. I was going to get onto that, Very yeah. lucky man. Yeah, I think he's very lucky to be on. I think Nigel Owens has been really lenient Absolutely, there because yeah. um, it's not a tap on the head; it's a proper slap yeah, on the yeah. head. And and there were punches thrown in the mix of players as well, which I saw. Um, but yeah, I think he was very lucky to oh. be on the pitch. I think he talked his way out of it quite well, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think he's very lucky. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I, I mean, I didn't see any punches thrown about, but yeah, sl- something like that. It's not no place in rugby, and I think he should have been binned yeah. for it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I think uh, Nige was a bit too lenient with him there, but um, yeah, yeah uh, but yeah. So, but it's, it's no place for it, and I if he, I think he should have gone to the bin for it. It was just uh, dumb play, and we don't really need it in rugby, but. Yeah. So, but he's like, so yeah. Nige, Nige was uh, a bit too lenient. I think we can both agree there. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I really can say about that. Just uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, there was one or two other little things as well, but uh, happening games on the whole. Yeah, England definitely the much better team and uh, deserved to win. Um, but yeah, I think we'll we'll do another one uh, next week. Looking forward to the. We uh, games go into more depth. Looking into the games in a couple of weeks' time, but uh, what do you? Yeah. How do you think uh, they're going to go? We're just going to. I think we'll think we'll just briefly discuss it just now. Yeah, um, Scotland, France. That's the first one up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
very interesting game. Scotland will go there with confidence. But as we said before, France at home, uh, you never know with France. It's a cliche in rugby now, but it's true. You just never know. Um, based on today's performance, I would back Scotland to go over there and win. Um, but again, you just never know with France. But for France, I would start the likes of Dupont. I'd like to see him given a go. Um, and maybe uh, give Antimac another chance, uh, give him another go. Uh, but yeah, it would be interesting that one. But I would back Scotland. Um, then Wales, England at the moment, I hate to say it, but I think England would win on the at the minute. It just depends on team selection. Uh, being Cardiff, you never know. A 30 to 3 again would be nice. <laughs> uh, Not happening, man. Not happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then Ireland, Italy, well, I can only see Ireland getting a bonus point mm. from that, to be honest. Yeah. Italy will hold their own for 40, 50 minutes, maybe, but then it'll be a sea of green just taking over and smashing Italy out of the water. What about you? What do you think? Um, yeah, I think um, we, I mean, I, I, not so much for yesterday, uh, as much as more how badly France played today. I think we should be going there with a lot more confidence and uh, we also, I think, should, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely look a lot better collectively um, as a team than France do right now. So that, I think, could play to our advantage. Um, the big, the biggest concern I would have going over there is uh, how big their pack is. And whereas we've got a more athletic pack, uh, bar one or two play players, and we don't have, like, real massive beasts that France do. So that's my, that's my main concern going over there. But apart from that, if we're if we cut out the simple errors, don't give them anything cheap, and um, we play you know our game. Make sure we're getting the balance better as well. Make sure our that we've got a platform for our back line before we try and spread it, because I think we're still guilty of that sometimes where we try and spread it before we've got the platform. If that makes sense, um, but hopefully yeah. we get the platform first and then spread it wide. Um, I think we should be okay there. But uh, yeah, that's my biggest concern is is France's monster pack. And the fact we haven't won in Paris for twenty years, so yeah, I hope I hope we yeah. can break that duck, and uh, I'm confident we can do. But I don't think it'll be. I think it'll be a tightish game. I think I think we'll we could we should win, but I don't think it'll be um, a big score. And Wales England, um, I have to say England, I think it will be a closeish game. I think you'll get a losing bonus point, but England, I think will just. Get it? I think. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very. I don't think you have to worry about it being a route because I'm very confident Wales will step up and they'll know they'll they'll have to step up yeah. and being on a winning run uh, just now as well that will definitely help and um, give you confidence as winning become can become, becomes as much as a habit as losing can be. And the other game, yeah, I think we're in, on the same page there. Spe expecting Ireland to win comfortably. Um, Although I don't know about, like, I think Italy might, you know, stick in them for little bits throughout the 80 minutes. But overall, yeah, I expect Ireland to just be too much for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and for you guys as well, that pack could be a big issue. But, uh, you know, France is fitness. We mm -hmm. saw it today. And if you can keep it fairly close, if you're still in it with 60 minutes to go, then hopefully it'll open up for some of your backs. Hopefully yeah. Stuart Hoggle bit for that game. Uh, we don't know the extent of the injury. Yeah, it looks like it's fine. Like ho hopefully, hopefully it's nothing yeah. too serious because uh, having yeah. him back would be good. And uh, and yeah, I would I would put um, Blair Kinghorn on the wing over Tommy Seymour uh, again. But yeah. um, well, we can talk more about that in the, in a couple of weeks. Really, yeah. I just like I said, but um, if that's my as as I said, my main worry is how big France's pack is. Uh, but we, uh, but it's uh, you know rugby's a game that we can play a million ways, and the brain can. Sometimes out if we're smart enough up front, we can definitely like take their big lumps out of the equation. But uh, we'll yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, anything else we we'll talk about just now? Um, or no, I think that's it. I think it's been a great weekend of rugby, and on to the next one. It's not about the break next week, but it has to happen, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I give us a bit of a week off as well. I'm back refereeing next Saturday, so. Uh, I've got to like um, get get myself um, trained up for that. But anyway, yeah, yeah, that's uh, I think I think that'll that'll do us. Uh, we'll give us we'll close that out there. Uh, thanks for listening all. Um, nice to have you on again as always, Brandon. And this will go in you. your channel as well, no doubt. So uh, yeah, hopefully it gets a good response there. And uh, we'll catch you later. <laughs>